Inside the Cube, this is HP Discover. We are in Las Vegas for day two of three days of live coverage here at HP Discover 2013, a place where all their top customers, partners, uh, tech gurus are all here, and it's a great, great environment. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and I'm joined by my co-host. Hi, everybody, I'm Dave Vellante at Wikibon.org. Roger Levy is here. He's the general manager of HP's cloud services. Roger, welcome to the Cube. Well, thank you, great to be back again. Yeah, so, we were talking off camera, a lot of action, obviously you guys at the heart of it with, with OpenStack, we're really excited about that. I mean, we had the cube at OpenStack, I was watching all the videos, I was salivating, I wish I could have been out there with so, you guys. So Dave, we had him on the cube, but he also was a cloud service provider, he's been in the cloud business for years, so, so um, he knows a little bit about cloud. Yeah. So we had a good chat. So what's your takeaway with the OpenStack here? So I was just on Twitter yesterday, Roger, commenting that it is being talked about a lot here at HP Discover, more than I would expect. Mm -hmm. I would have expected, given that it's such a big show for HP across their enterprise customers, but cloud is super hot here, and OpenStack. They're both both super hot. I mean, the, the real issue, I mean, for us is cloud is one of our major strategic pillars for the corporation. Uh, we have, I, I think, a, a tremendous you know, opportunity at this show to you know talk with our partners, talk with our customers, and really let them see what we're doing in the cloud, and that's really across all aspects of crowd, you know, public, private, and managed in our full hybrid solution. And OpenStack's a huge piece of it. You know, as we talked about up in OpenStack in Portland, I mean, we, as HP, we looked at this promising but unproven technology, you know, two plus years ago, before a lot of people were signing on board. Made a major commitment to it, a major investment to it, not only you know, in the in the financial sense, but certainly also in the strategic sense and in the area of committing people, committing code, and really, you know, working to make, you know, OpenStack a very successful community. So talk about, I want you to comment, if you can, and candidly around HP's personnel. You know, we, Dave and I love, love to use sports analogies. Mm -hmm. um, the team on the field, the cloud team. SAR, you've got uh, Tom Joyce now as a GM, you're out here. The team is pretty well stacked. It's just yep. talk, put some color around it. What, what what's it like internally? You got some people who know what they're talking about. How's it shaping out with the team here at HP? We've got I mean we've got a dream team. I mean we have a set of folks who have been in this business in one way or another for quite a bit of time. We've all had experience in both large companies and startup companies. I've been in startups. You know came out of the telecom space. Spent time in the enterprise space. Spent time. In, in the past space. SAR's got an amazing background in, in networking, uh, now you know, coupled with the work that he did in uh, Cisco, in 3Com, then into HP. I mean, we have built power. And you know, I, I guess really the behind the scenes uh, aspect is, as you can imagine, lots of discussions, lots of opinions, but you know, the reality is, uh, it is great. It's great debate. And at the end of the day, we are making tremendous progress. So I'm, I'm just thrilled to be part of this team. So tell about what's going on in your world right now. So get the teams, I agree with you by the way, I'm really impressed. And holistically, I think what's happening is that you have a holistic management structure where you have someone looking over the mining the stores, I, I was always to say, someone's mining the store, both at the top with uh, SAR, and then underneath, we just had Bethany Mayer on. She's mining the mm -hmm. store from the networking fabric side. So you get the fabric covered, Absolutely. you get the top line air show covered, the ground game covered. So you get the, everything and, now in the middle, that's you. And, and by the well. way, great great thanks to Bethany. I mean, one of the things we just announced today at the show is the virtual private networking capability on the public cloud based on SDN. That was done completely in conjunction with Bethany's team in HP Networking and with HP Labs. Uh, you know, just a great teamwork effort. SDN is complex. It, it's it's really hard Don't forget hard the data stuff. stuff too, Dave. We just talked about tiering and, the, and data management, huge Absolutely. issue. Absolutely. Well, you know, we love sports analogies, Roger, <laughs> and the cube. <laughs> All right. right. So, 
So it's like the, the horses are coming around the track on the far turn, and all of a sudden, you know, in the horse racing parlance, they say the red seat parted. And all of a sudden, it's the, here comes open stack. And it was like, it's an amazing time in our industry because, you it came know, out of nowhere. I mean, let's, let's, let's talk frankly. When, when VMware messed up its pricing two years ago, customer base said, whoa, uh-oh, lock in. And, and all these alarms went off. Uh, and then, of course, you got Amazon you know, doing its thing. It's like a wake-up call to CIOs. Hey, coming into the enterprise. You guys are very comfortable not having to own the operating system and the platform. You've proven that you can make money there for years. So OpenStack was sort of a natural tendency for you. And so it's like, like I said, that Red Sea parted and all of a sudden here comes OpenStack as a you know, really viable contender with all the development, uh, developer momentum behind it, some proof points, um, and some real action. And you guys um, are sitting in a good spot right now. I, I think absolutely. They, the, this, one of the, the key observations I'd make on OpenStack is early on it was a vendor-driven activity. You know, the vendors really got together. They were, you know, some of the primary people in moving it forward. Uh, the thing that really uh, I think is interesting and certainly uh, very pleasing is we're seeing more and more of uh, the enterprise customer and the large you know, enterprise and small enterprise actually now getting much more actively engaged and driving uh, OpenStack. And to me, that's a major you know, point of inflection in a, an open source project like this. Yeah, it's serious cloud service providers, and then the developers are voting you know, with, their, with their, well, their hands and their clicks. People, people are tired of closed proprietary solutions. Uh, you know, they see what happens. There's limited choice. They are you know, pressed on the economics of things. They don't get the portability that they you know, require. They don't get the mobility they require. And you know they do see OpenStack and other projects like it as the the way to go. And you know I think because of that, OpenStack is now the fastest growing open source project I think in history. Well, we were just debating about the you know cloud stack and OpenStack, and to me, ecosystems always win. At the end of the day, ecosystems are, are what make it. Absolutely. Markets obviously are, are, have a market. I think the cloud market is pretty wide open at this point, um, but the ecosystem is pretty strong. Um, but I want to get your comments here. Here at HP Discovery, you said a great place to meet customers and parties all in one place. What's your day, days like here, Tim? Walk us through <laughs> you, what, you, what you're doing here. I mean, not, my, not, my not days that, have been long. You know, let's put it so, that way. I mean, are you announcing new stuff? Who, what kind of customer conversations are you having? Just share us some of the so inside abs, baseball abs, of, great, of your great. world. No, it's a fantastic question. So we've really been doing many things all together here during the day. Uh, we had a series of announcements this morning. We had the, uh, the press briefing and press announcement across all of Converge Cloud. And for the public cloud, we announced a series of additional enterprise-grade enhancements, things like uh, what I call we've supersized our compute instances. 120 gig, 16 CPUs. You bring us the nastiest, most in data intense you know, analytics workload, we got an instance for you. You know, we introduced VPN on the cloud. We introduced our bulk import service. Uh, you know, customers have been coming to us saying, you know, we want to bring terabytes and petabytes to the public cloud, but the bandwidth we have from our, you know, premise to you, kind of limited, it's going to take us a while. So now they have the option of actually shipping us physical media. We take, you know, secure control of it, and we get it very quickly onto a high-speed link into uh, our object store. How about that? The Chevy truck is faster than the network. You got it. <laughs> uh, you know, for this, it, it absolutely, absolutely is. Yeah. So, good part of the day has been, you know, with uh, press, with analysts around our recent announcements, and then uh, big piece uh, around customers. We had a good uh, customer lunch, and what I really loved is we asked the question of about 30 people sitting in the room, you know, how many people have or are working on a cloud strategy for the business. I think every hand but one went up. And I think the one hand was uh, sort of an HP person who <laughs> was, was there. Uh, and then so much of it has also just been a meeting with all of our great partners. We have a large number of our key partners here, you know, uh, folks like Panzura, folks like Clicker, uh, and others, and just getting the opportunity to understand what they're seeing, what they're hearing, how we can work better together, both technically as well as on go-to-market. So, What's been the most exciting feedback you've gotten from either press analysts or customers to the news you were, you were launching? I think the most exciting thing, and it just, it just resonates with my own belief system, so it's exciting, is we are the enterprise cloud. People are getting the message, they understand what we mean, 
They understand what we mean technically, and now they're beginning to understand what we mean by business practice, that we're going to be open, we're going to be transparent, we're going to be flexible, and we are going to make the public cloud experience similar to what they can do within their own data centers and give them that flexibility, not take it away. What is the preferred expectation of the clients for enterprise cloud? Because obviously Amazon's kind of lumpy, they have SLA issues, and you know, it could be fast one day, slow the other, um, but it's different smaller markets, developers, and you know, they, they're mm -hmm. going, they're trying to go to the enterprise. Oh. You guys are in the enterprise, you're in touch with that. What is the preferred expectation and, and service level agreements from the customers? So the service level agreements are important. I mean, we have you know, some of the highest level you know, with 99.95, you know, but what we're actually finding is that's not the key things. That the key things is ease of use, it's clearly what we're doing around security, and a lot of it comes back to business practice. Are we really willing to treat them like enterprise customers? I'll give you one example. Uh, one of these other big providers, you know, typically when you buy reserve instances, you're locked in. You're locked into the availability zone, you're locked into the region, you're locked into the instance size for one or many years. Well, if you were in your own enterprise data center and you wanted to change something, you go change it. If we want to bring the enterprise experience to the public cloud, well, we have to allow our customers that flexibility. So we allow, if you, you know, do a advanced purchase reserve instance model with us, and you say, look, you know, I bought size X and I need double X or five X, our new instance yeah. size. No problem. No problem. We will work that because that's what you can do in your own data center. And so translating the experience means that. So it's it transcends just the technology, it transcends So things. the customer benefits with cloud is obviously the economics around the OpEx versus CapEx uh, and, op, and economics around new applications. Is there anything else that I missed there? Well, that's, I mean, from a, from a financial point of it, that's a piece of it. I mean, obviously the, you know, the ability to take advantage of peakedness, to take advantage of seasonality is a big piece. But you know what's really been interesting in the last three, four months, we've seen a shift in the conversation. When we launched Public Cloud about a year ago, customer conversations were around purely economics. It's changed. Economics still an issue, but it's number two or three or four on the list. Number one is, how can you make me more agile? How can I use the Public Cloud to improve my time to market for new services, to allow my internal users to be able to get workloads faster, to be able to replicate workloads faster, to be able to have better, you know, high availability, disaster recovery, business continuity. And, and always, look, cost and the economics are always going to be a factor, yeah. but it's no longer the starting point of the conversation. Yeah, and you know, I totally agree with that, Roger. I mean, in fact, the customers I talk to, I mean, they, they sort of, beginning to understand that rental is often a lot more expensive than, than, uh, than owning, you know, from an outlay standpoint, but from a business cost and, a, and an agility perspective, and how fast you can actually do something, it's, it's driving <coughs> revenue, so it's not even a it's, discussion. It's all about business outcome. If you can help achieve a better business outcome, faster, with more flexibility, and still provide the appropriate economics, it's a win. And that's really what we're doing within the public cloud. So when I was at the uh, analyst meeting, I think it was in March in Boston. Oh, you were snowy there. Boston. Yeah, you were there, you were up on stage, and I, you know, I'm an analyst, I'm asking my obnoxious <laughs> questions. And, and when I, I asked, they said, you know, the CIOs I talked to, they're looking at Amazon as another arrow in the quiver, ah, and yes. where does Amazon fit? And then you, I loved your response, you said, well, that's true, Amazon is an, an arrow in the, the quiver of the CIO. We're trying to be like, I think you said, like the nuclear weapon in, you know, in, in the arsenal. <laughs> and uh, so. What did you mean by that, and, well, and, and it, how do you make that reality? It really comes back to this nature of enterprise grade. I mean, our large customers, our enterprise customers, really need something that mirrors what their expectations are inside of what they can do in their own data centers. And you know, there are going to be people who are able to provide large, high-scale mass market solutions, and that's great. The industry and the market needs that. But what CIOs need is they need that better weapon. And in my mind, that better weapon is the combined power of our hybrid solution. It's having private cloud, it's having public cloud, it's having managed cloud. And today we announced probably the most significant thing, which is the overall introduction of Cloud OS and the fact that Cloud OS will be running in all three of those solutions. To us, that's the missile, that's the weapon. 
that the CIO will be able to benefit from across our hybrid solutions. I think the Cloud OS message is really fantastic, and I think you guys got to amp that up because what the data points that we're hearing is the data center is an operating system, and the cloud is the, the extension of the data center. Mm -hmm. It has to run like an operating system, so if it's going to be software-led infrastructure, it has to function with all the feature functions within the operating system. So I, I think that message resonates. Um, are you guys finding the same thing with customers? Absolutely, I mean, I think the two key things that have been you know, uh, really resonating, one is the Cloud OS discussion, and the other has been the Moonshot discussion. And you know, when we, when we look at how we you know, really improve the economics of public cloud, Moonshot is right up front. So these are the things that are going to continue to provide us you know, that next weapons grade, uh, you know, level uh, solution. Yeah, so you can pick off the workloads that are really appropriate for Moonshot, drive drive your costs down and pass that on to your customers. And that's a unique advantage that you have that a lot of people are poo-pooing, Roger. And we talked to, you know, your competitors about, yeah, man, Moonshot, we don't really get it, but you guys get it. We, we <laughs> get it, I mean, you know. Savas it, gets it. It, it was great when, uh, you know, Meg during her keynote said, look, the thing draws, you know, the same power about 60 household light bulbs, uh, six household light bulbs. You know, it really just it explains the, the advantages. And yes, we can partition off certain level workloads that will be very appropriately served yep. within Moonshot. Save the footprint, save the power, save the cooling, and pass that improvement on to our customers as we scale, you know, out the public cloud. So tell us what's on your roadmap. Obviously, we're talking with Margaret and your marketing team. Your objectives, tactically. You said Hong Kong. You got an event. What's the what's the what's the battle plan to take this to market? So you know, really, what we're doing is, and this is a great piece of getting our message out. Uh, a large piece of it is really just continuing to get the story out on what an enterprise cloud really is and how we fulfill that. And then working through our partner ecosystem, as you mentioned before, you know, ecosystems are critical in open source communities. Ecosystems are obviously critical to us. We have a fantastic partner community, a fantastic partner uh, and channel resale, and it's really working with them to to reach out, you know, uh, very very broadly. Okay, Roger Levy here inside the Cube uh, Cube alumni, and again. You know, we'll go down in history. He was on the Cube at OpenStack when we were there for the for the the inflection point, as I'm calling it. This past OpenStack summit was really, to me, the changeover, the crossing the threshold where OpenStack's community really stood tall and crossed over to what I see as a clear path to a rallying cry in, in the cloud, open cloud market, open source. People are working together, build the code. Why build your own scoreboard when people are bringing their own scoreboard to the game, as uh, the uh, owner of the giant said, and uh, open source is a great way. You guys have been very successful, and you got a good team, and you know what? Sometimes the stars line up, and uh, we'll be following you guys, so we we'll follow following the HP's Cloud. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back after this short break with our next guest. Uh, stay tuned. <laughs>